Okay, we're going to continue our look at some finite geometries. We're going to start getting a little bit more uh, interesting now. We're going to look at, uh, in this video, a four-point geometry and a four-line geometry. Still fairly small geometries, but uh, let's, let's work on these. So, in this four-point geometry, we're going to have just three postulates. There exist exactly four distinct points. Okay. Postulate 2, each pair of distinct points is contained in exactly one line. And each line contains exactly two points. So no more, no less. So the exactly part there uh, is pretty important. So let's go ahead and derive a model for this. And along the way, we may prove some uh, very basic um, propositions. So where are we going to start? Well, we need to start with our existence postulate, which is number one. So there exist exactly four distinct points. We're going to call them A, B, C, and D. So there's no more or less than this. This is exactly this set of points. Now, if we have pairs of points, we can get lines. So let's list all the pairs of points. There are actually six. Uh, 4 choose 2 is 6, so there's AB, AC, AD, BC, BD, and CD. So we just list them all, list all the points out, list out all the sets of pairs of 2, uh, sets of 2, and of course count them, that's 6. And so those are all the sets of 2 points. And each pair of distinct points is contained in exactly one line, and there's one line containing each of the 6 pairs of points above. Okay. Now this generates up to six points. We've used statement two and postulate two. So far we haven't used postulate three. Now postulate three says that each uh, line, each line is, it consists of exactly two points. So once you have AB on the line, that is the entire line. And so this is our complete set of lines. So notice that with statement 2 and 3 says that we, we have these sets of two points and that there are lines containing each of these sets. Postulate 3 says there can't be any more points on there, so these are exactly sets of lines. We can't have any other possibilities because you can't have a line with just one point because of postulate 3. Okay? And we can't have lines with more than two points because of postulate three. So putting those together, that limits us to just these points. And so now we have a complete, uh, complete model. Okay, what are some propositions? Um, notice we have some propositions here. And the visual that we have here can help us, um, but we have to be careful that in our visual we don't uh, we don't base everything on the visual itself. It just gives us some inspiration. We'd have to be able to prove these things. For example, there's a proposition one. I'm going to give it two parts. Uh, given any line L and a point X not on the line, there exists exactly one line through X parallel to L. So, for example, if you take this line here containing A and D and a point B then there exists one line parallel to it. This would be the line BC. So given any line, there exists exactly one line parallel to it and four lines that intersect it. So if we take line AD, for example, the lines AB, AC, DC, and DB intersect it, and there's four of those, and one line parallel, the line BC. And of course, you can do this, this kind of a proof is very very quick now that we have an entire set of lines and it's finite we could just check this pretty quickly also notice that any pair of distinct lines intersect in at most one point they may not intersect at all we do have parallel lines but they don't intersect in more than one line so those are things that we could prove from this so that is a four point geometry. Notice that this one started with the four points. Um, we actually had six lines. 
could have also called it a six line geometry, but it actually was generated by the points, so that's why I named it a four point geometry. Now, so far we've, we've done one, two, three, and four point geometries where we were guaranteed the existence of that number of points exactly. Now let's look at one where the postulates have to do with, the, exi the existence postulate has to deal with the lines. So this one's a different kind of existence postulate, postulate one, there exists exactly four distinct lines. Notice that uh, our initial existence and uh, incidence postulates are more like the uh, one, two, three, point, four point ones because our existence postulate is number uh, three here. There exist at least four non-collinear, non-coplanar points. So notice that in Euclidean geometry and, and in, in neutral geometry, we're going to uh, assume the existence of points. We don't assume the existence of any lines up front. We prove the existence of lines. Now notice in this case though, we're going to turn it around and we're going to assume the existence of four distinct lines in postulate one. Now, um, our postulates here should say something, at least one of them should say something about if we have lines, then we have something about points. And in fact, that's what postulate two says. Each pair of distinct lines intersects in exactly one point. So another way to phrase that is if L and M are lines, then there exists exactly one point X uh, in the intersection of the two lines, L and M. Postulate three, each point is on exactly two lines. So this says if you have a point, there exists two lines containing it and only two lines containing it. So where do we start in building our model? Well, we start with our existence postulate. So we have the existence of four lines and we're going to call them P, Q, R, and S. Now at this point, we don't know anything about where, how, how they're situated in terms of their intersections. Um, I do have the final version out here to the side, but at this point, we don't really know that they're looking like this, just, just the fact that we have four lines. Now, let's go on a little further. Each pair of di distinct lines intersects in at exactly one point. So let's look at all the different intersections. If we take pair of lines, they generate a distinct point. So P intersect Q is going to be the point A. P intersect R is the point B. P intersect S is the point C. Q intersect R is the point D. Q intersect S is the point E. And R intersect S is the point F. Now what we do know for sure at this point is that these intersections, this is exactly the intersection. There are no other points on the intersection of these lines. What we don't know for sure yet is if these lines may, uh, you might have three inner lines intersecting at one single point. We don't know if that's true or false yet. Uh, because so, so in other words, point A and B, per, for example, could be the same point, perhaps, uh, unless we can eliminate that. Of course, we will actually eliminate that. So we need to show there are exactly six distinct points. Okay, so we need to show there are at least six points and that uh, there are no more than six points. So what are the, why are these unique points? Why can these not, two of these be the same? Well, if, if there were two of these points were the same, say A and B were the same, then it would be on both lines, well, it would be on three lines. It would be on lines P, Q, and R. But postulate three now says each point is on exactly two lines, and that would violate postulate three. Notice at steps one and two, we've only used postulate one and two. Now we use postulate three as well. Without postulate three, we could probably have three uh, a point being on three lines. Now, each point is on at least two lines means uh, by postulate three. So, so the postulate three, at, the part of postulate three that says at most two lines, um, each point is on at most two lines says that these are distinct points. Okay. The fact, the why, how do we know these are the only points is because of the uh, at least part of postulate three. Each point is on at least two lines. So uh, we know, because we've listed all the points that are, all the intersections of two lines, we have a complete set. So in fact, 
this, uh, this model consists of the points A, B, C, D, E, and F, and lines P, Q, R, and S, where what are the lines? The lines P is A, B, C, um, the uh, line Q is A, D, E, and so forth. And so, what are some propositions that we would have? Uh, given a line and a point not X, line L and a point X not on L, there exists exactly one point on L which is non-collinear with X. So let's let's take that. So let's take a point, take a line, say line P, and a point not on the line, let's say D. Then there's exactly one point on this line at P that's not collinear with D. It's point C in this case. Point A and B are collinear with D. There's a line going through those two. But there is no line going through D and C. So that's the, the behavior here is definitely different than uh, Euclidean geometry. Uh, the other uh, four point geometry was much more consistent with, linear, with Euclidean geometry. Of course, it's different because it only has four points. But uh, some of the other uh, propositions are, are similar to what you would get in Euclidean geometry. This is very different. In Euclidean geometry, they're given two points. There has to be a line containing them. And notice in this geometry, that's not true. So given any point, let's pick a point, A, then there exists exactly one point non-collinear with it and four points that are collinear. The one that's not collinear with A is point F, and all of the others are collinear. And proposition two, given any pair of points, there exists at most one line containing them. So if we take E and F, there is one line. But if we take F and A, there's not a line. So there might not be a line. Now, these two geometries that we just looked at, the four-point and the four-line geometry, are what we call dual geometries. And two geometries are said to be dual if and only if there's a bijection between the points of one geometry and the lines of the other geometry and vice versa and such that the instance relations are reversed. For example, is on in the original geometry becomes contains in the dual geometry. Okay, intersecting becomes collinear. Parallel becomes non-collinear, and so forth. So, the four-point and the four-line geometry are duals of each other. Note that the four points of the four-point geometry can be mapped to the four lines of the four-line geometry so that the incidences are reverse, such that if a point is on a line in the four-point geometry, then its image of the line, Okay, then the image line of that point contains the image point of the line of the other one. So they, they, they match up. So when you do this, then you should be able to sort of reverse these, the postulates and the propositions and exchange sort of point and line. So notice that works out like this. Uh, postulate 1 says there exist exactly four distinct points in the four-point geometry the dual of that is there exist exactly four distinct lines. That's the postulate in the four-line geometry. Postulate two in the four-point geometry says each pair of distinct points is contained in exactly one line. So if you have the points, then there's exactly one line containing them. The dual of that is postulate two in four-line geometry. Each pair of distinct lines intersects in exactly point point. In other words, if you have two lines, then there exists exactly one point that is in the intersection. Postulate 3 in the four-point geometry is each line contains exactly two points. The dual of that is postulate 3 in the four-line geometry. Each point is on exactly two lines. And notice that the propositions we came up with are also dual to each other. Proposition 1A says that in the four-point geometry says given any line L and a point X not on the line there exists exactly one line through X parallel to L. The dual of that is proposition 1A in the four-line geometry. 
Given a line L and a point X not on line L, there exists exactly one point on L which is non-collinear with X. Notice that non-collinear over in the four-line geometry corresponds to parallel over in the four-point geometry. Proposition 1B, given any line, there exists exactly one there exists exactly one line parallel to it and four lines that intersect it. The dual of that is given any point, there exists exactly one point non-collinear with it and four points collinear with it. Okay? Proposition two in the four point geometry says any pair of distinct lines intersect in at most one point. The, the corresponding dual proposition in four-line geometry is given any pair of points, X and Y, there exists at most one line containing both of them. So if we continue on, uh, we see now that some, some other things have popped up here. We have another proposition uh, in the four-point geometry is that each point is on exactly three lines. For example, um, you can see this from the picture pretty easily because from every point you see three lines uh, from it. Okay, And of course, in the, the dual of that in, pro, in the four-line geometry is each line contains exactly three points. And of course, you can see that pretty clearly here or just in the list of points here uh, that make the lines. So here we have our models. Our model on the four-point geometry is the points are A, B, C, D. That's set. And the lines are sets of two points. So that would be A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D. For the four-line geometry, we have our model is the points are A, B, C, D, E, and F. And the lines are sets of three of those points. That would be P is A, B, C, Q is A, D, E, R is BDF, S is CEF. Not any set of three points, just specifically those. Now, we said that these are dual to each other, so there must be a correspondence between points on the left and lines on the right, and vice versa. Um, and so that all these incidences are, are um, preserved. So, uh, we, if we map A to li line P, B to line Q, and C to line R, and D to line S, okay, going from uh, the model on the left to the model on the right, then we have to map, th to get the incidences to, to match up uh, like this, notice that if A and B are on the same line, then that line AB has to be mapped to the point that's where these two lines intersect. So where P and Q intersect, which is point A, that's the image of the line AB on the and through this correspondence. So our correspondence maps points to lines and lines to points. And uh, similarly, point B gets, uh, uh, let's see, for example, A and C is a line over here. So that line AC has to be mapped to point over here, and it has to be the where those images intersect. So if they're concurrent on a line here, they have to be concurrent on the... Uh, if these two points are on the same line, these two lines must intersect in the image point. So P intersect R, let's see, that's the point B here, and so forth. I'll let you check the rest of those uh, out yourself, but you can see how that correspondence lines up. And so that's a dual system. And the one thing that's kind of nice about a dual system is if you can prove something over here on this side, then you're going to get a corresponding result on this side and vice versa. Uh, of course, there's a bijection. The mappings go backwards as well. And um, sometimes you might see the proof better one way than you can see kind of how to rewrite it uh, for the other system. So that's, those are called dual geometries. Um, we'll come back in the next couple of videos. We'll talk about affine and projective geometries, which uh, are some some specific sets of uh,
postulates which uh, actually are undergoing some current study and have been for a while.